Hello everybody, it's Noelin. Today we'll be looking at YouTube Analytics, creating a dashboard on Google Data Studio. So we'll be doing this using a Google Data Studio custom connector that connects directly to your YouTube Analytics. It brings in about 47 metrics and dimensions that we can use to create this dashboard. As well as this, we're going to sample a YouTube Analytics template that is free to use. All you just need to do is link it to your data. So first things first, subscribe, like, share, comment, and tell me what you like, tell me what you want to see. So we're going to go straight into it now. This is a view of what the dashboard I've created looks like. A table of the videos, a snapshot of my subscribers and my target, how many likes, how many shares, how many comments, my month watch time. So we're going to go and add data now just by clicking on add data. We're going to scroll down to YouTube analytics you have to then link it to your YouTube and your YouTube account. For me, I've done that already. So Google Data Studio often creates a table of visual for you using the data you've connected to. So this time around, it's created this table and I do want to use that. So I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm going to add more metrics. So I'm going to add shares, number of shares, number of likes, the length of the video, the comments and the subscribers this video have brought in. So the aim of this table is just to be able to, on a first glance, see how my videos compare to each other. So which one is doing better, which one, so that's how many, ha which one has more views, which one has more likes, more shares, which one is more engage engaging. So I would have liked to be able to add the date I posted the video online. My, the YouTube connector you, created by Google does have restrictions in the terms that it does not bring in all the metrics that you typically see if you looked at your YouTube studio. So that is something to be aware of if you want to create something in Google Data Studio. It's bringing about 47 metrics and I think, I'm not sure, I'm sure we have more. I'm going to find how many metrics we have on YouTube Analytics and put it on, on the screen at this point. I'm, I'm sure we have more. So what I found then is that this dashboard is kind of limited in what I can display, but I'm going to go straight away and add a geo map of my viewers across the world. So which country do I have more views from? So I have a country code and I'm going to color this by the watch time. Just bringing in my geo map, actually Google Data Studio picks the metrics that I want. So I'm not going to change anything because that's what I want my map to look like. I'm going to the report setting to make sure that the date is actually the date I want to see. So to do that, select your data source, which is YouTube analytics. And instead of an auto, which is 28 days, I'm going to use an advanced date setting where I set my start date to a fixed date that I know about. And my end date would be today as every, so, if this was tomorrow, my end date would have been tomorrow, would have been, you know, whatever the date is tomorrow. So I'm just changing this to March 1st as my start date and my end date would be today plus zero. Just as you can see, my numbers has changed because it was using an auto date um range which i do not want so it's something to keep in mind google data studio does restrict your date automatically most often and you need to make sure that it's actually the date you're looking to view instantly that you're seeing so i'm just adding a time series plot of date by views and this will just show me how the pattern is increasing so i would know if some of the things i've been doing it's increasing the views I have. 
um i'm just going to then add scorecards so what is a dashboard without scorecards i'm going to add scorecards of my total views of the total watch time of my number of subscribers and i'm going to set myself a target of 300 subscribers say by next year so just hold on a second and you'll see me do that so this time around i'm just adding a scorecard of my total watch time and i'm going to customize one of it to show current watch time so my month to date and it's going to compare it to my previous month to date and see how i'm doing month on month so this is easy in google data studio you just need to click on the scorecard you're looking at customize the date range so I'm, instead of advanced i'm going to select this month to date okay and then i'm going to check the comparison date range and check change it to previous period so it's going to compare this month to previous period as you can see 30 minutes watch time this month and it's up 6.3 percent compared to last month so i think that's a good metric to to have you can do it for views you can do it for shares you can do it for subscribers but for now i think i'm just looking at my watch time and see how that has changed over time and see if some of the efforts or no efforts i've been doing has an impact on my watch time so i'm just adding a scorecard of my likes versus my comments okay and i'm customizing it um just to look the way i want by going to the style option so google data studio lets you customize your scorecards your tables i'm going to add the border shadow and i i'm beginning to like to add a curve to my to my graphs and my scorecard it makes it look more professional in my opinion so I'm, I'm adding that to everything and i should have done this for the first scorecard and then copied and pasted so that my formats keep true without me having to do it for 10 or 5 scorecards that i add to my dashboard so pro tip create your first scorecard Customize it to look the way you want and then copy and paste and change the metric that you show on each scorecard and that saves you time. So I'm just adding more scorecards. Probably should have fast forwarded these points, but I think it's good to see that actually when someone says, oh, quick dashboard, it does take at least 10 minutes or more to create one. When you've de defined your metrics and how you want it to look beforehand, this is taking about 15, I think 10 minutes in total because I've done this before. I know what I want it to look like. And that's the thing about data analytics and creating reports and dashboard, which I tell the people that ask me, I say the most important thing is to understand the problem or the questions you're looking to answer if you like drawing i think sketch it out on a piece of paper or play about in the actual bi tool you're going to use and then go on and create so in total it's going to take much more time that you would expect because you don't want to throw in random numbers and figures on a score on a dashboard or a report just to fill it up so I'm adding the bullet chart, which is where I can set a target. I can set my upper limit, my mid limit, and my lower limit. So my target is 200 subscribers by next year. So I've done that. And I think the limitation for me with a bullet chart is the blue point, which is now pink, which I've changed to pink. I would love it to be able to show the actual subscribers I have to date. So that I see that, but it does show that when you hover over the pink point. Um, so I just copied everything and moved it down. I'm just going to just design, you know, the aesthetics of the dashboard. Who doesn't like a good looking dashboard? So 
a name, a title, YouTube analytics, no, I need, no numbers for no, I need, or not. I'm going to also, you know, quickly make this look better by using a theme which i think is we should all do and adapt making our life easier you can use themes provided by google data studio already or whatever bi2 you're using they all come with themes that you can use to kind of make your report look nicer and once you're comfortable with that tool you can start creating your own themes and your own templates so now i'm going to add a date range no dashboard that is based on time is complete without the ability to filter down by dates in my opinion so i am doing that i'm just going to color in with pink again just to reduce the number of colors i have on the report and now i'm just selecting the constellation theme and as you can see the dashboard looks nicer just by doing that everything kinds of pops out and so it's ready to share you can share it with your colleagues if you're working with um with with other people you can share this with them and they can begin to track the youtube analytics channel so i'm just going to rename this now again i think if you've been in data, or you've been creating reports, you know this. You name your reports, your dashboard to be in line with what it actually contains. That it just makes it makes more sense to do that. So I hope this will be of help to you if you have a YouTube channel and you want to do a quick one, a quick dashboard, you can go ahead and create that. So again, just to add a bit of functionality, I just expanded the size of my report. I'm going to add a note section because this is probably a dashboard you create for yourself and you should or you are able to add notes as you view them. So I'm going to, I'm adding things like increase my subscribers to 300 by next year if I can sell, if I can spell subscribers right. Thank God for auto check and auto correct um, to 200 actually. So my target is 200 subscribers. So again, I'm plugging it. Subscribe, please. Share with your friends. If you found this useful, please subscribe and share with your friends. And again, I'm setting myself another target. Upload once every month. So at least once. I say upload every month. So at least once. And now I'm looking at the table that shows me that my video with the short length, eight minutes video, has more likes, more watch time. So it could be that my subscribers prefer, I know it's just two samples, so two videos. So I cannot conclude at this point, but maybe my subscribers prefer, or the people that want to learn about Google Data Studio prefer shorter videos. So that is my target, increase my subscribers. And to do that, I need to upload more often. I need to upload content that my subscribers or potential subscribers would love to see. So shorter videos. And that is it. I'm just going now. So you can drop her here if this is all you want. But I'm just going to show you the variables that the YouTube connectors come with is about 47 in total includes annotations country code date date time is subscribed whether it's live streamed the user subscription added your video length and some pre-calculated metrics on average view percentage so not a lot but enough to have a good view of your dashboard and what and create a good view to create a dashboard okay so i'm going ahead to show you the youtube template so you just need to template gallery go to template gallery choose your youtube channel report template 
and it's going to bring up the template which looks nice it shows you your views your watch time your top videos the number of subscribers you have the number of likes that have been added and removed and your comments and then a geo map of where people are watching you from so to then make this your own what you need to do is click on use template so once you do that you become the owner by adding your data source so youtube analytics that's my data source and i'm copying the report and once you copy a report you become the owner of the report so technically now i can change any aspect of this template to fit what I want it to be. And this is why I've shown you how to create your own dashboard because this template could, could be that it doesn't serve the purpose or your purpose. For me, I think it doesn't fit. I just have two videos. I don't have enough data, for example, to know what my annotation closable impressions are. And um, I don't have enough views from the United States. I don't have any dislikes yet. So probably I think the, the 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 dashboard I've customized and created for myself suits me better than using the template. But I thought I'd show you the template in case. And this probably took me three minutes. And now you just need to custom kind of change it. I'm going to remove the data selector and if you have multiple youtube channels then that would be important to keep i'm going to again go to report setting and make sure that my date is custom date and instead of last 28 days i change it to advanced setting and i choose my start and my end date so you just get this copy this this template switch the data Make sure it looks right for you by like changing the title, changing your date setting if you want to. You can delete some charts if you think they are not important to you. And then you're ready to share. You're ready to keep track of your YouTube analytics. So it is good and I hope this you found this helpful. It's good to know that we have things that we can use to track our YouTube analytics on the go because you have this thing wherever you're going and you can easily click to it add comments keep track of your subscribers which videos are bringing in more subscribers and things like that so i've just changed the date control date range to auto because i've reset my auto i'm renaming the title of the google data studio report and this is now ready to use so thank you i hope you found this helpful i hope you can use this to create your own youtube analytics dashboard subscribe share leave a comment and tell me what you want to know next thanks